it's Rhoda Young here. Welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time, you're welcome. Well, if you are here, consider yourself to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss more of the future videos on this channel. You are really welcome. Feel safe and comfortable in this channel. And um, I've been talking about um, raising family in China, the challenges that you meet raising um, children in China, especially for the foreign community. And today I have the opportunity to speak to one of the experts living in China. She is a mom, a wife, as well as a teacher. They've been living in China for the past six years. And yeah, so let's get to hear how she has faced these challenges. What are the good and the bad about it? How she's getting ready to go back to America. We can also get to hear what are your fears, what are your expectations going back home, and what are the things that she would like to take with her going back onwards. And um, yes, and something that she's gonna miss about China. So without wasting much of your time, let's just dive right into the video. And while you are still on it, don't forget to like the video as well as subscribe to the video and share it with your friends it may help you or other people that you may know that are living in China or are planning to come and live in China so now let's dive in the video okay see you there I would like you to start by introducing yourself and also state how long have you been in China and where are you from okay I my name is Joy Biden Joy Lynn Biden and I have been in China for almost six years. Um, came from Minnesota in the US and yeah, I've been here and enjoying living here for six years. Six years, yeah, mm -hmm. six years. And now that I know you are planning to go back to the US, mm -hmm. um, what has been your experience living in China? Oh my, um, it's been, I really loved living here um, in some ways. I mean, I would say I had a very like privileged kind of position. Um, I I remember actually going to the side of the street one day and leaning to get a taxi and just feeling like, feeling like I can I can just get a taxi and they're gonna be polite and they're gonna take care of me and I can't speak the language and maybe I'm gonna be annoying for them like maybe I'm making their life harder mm -hmm. but they're not acting like that to me they're like really inviting and um and so that's just one little thing but I remember thinking wow you know foreigners aren't always in that position in right. every country that you go into and so I really felt grateful to have that and then of course like it's just such a beautiful environment I love Weihai um I love the mountains right. and I love the beach and the sea the, <laughs> yeah it's just I, I really, uh, really love being here. And I have, I did put this in my introduction, but I have three kids and a husband, and we just soak up the, the outdoor life here. And I was not knowing that I would come to China and enjoy, enjoy outdoor it. life. <laughs> so if I may ask you, for the, uh, like you've been here for six years, mm -hmm. and these six years, did you spend all the six years in Weihai yeah. or you have been to another city? All in Weihai. We, we love <laughs> We love Weihai. Weihai. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I really do. Um, I mean, I've, I've traveled around in some different cities and um, it's fun to, fun to see some other places, but wow, am I glad for the small city. It yes. has, and I mean, of course, you have Taobao, so you have everything that you want. It's just a click away. It's just a click away. Everything then, in China. And then, like, there's not the, I don't know, the traffic or the, Difficulty and also way high is so walkable. At least, if, like again, the, the life that I've lived here, I can just walk everywhere I go. I we counted it up the other day, and I think it was like we have five malls. Not only, I mean, of course, everybody has malls that you can go to, but we have five malls that we can walk to. And not only can we walk to, they're safe walks and they're beautiful walks. Right. You don't get this in many places in the world. <laughs> exactly. Like when you talk about safety, I know you have children, mm. right? Three children mm. you raised in Weihai during this season. Yeah, right. What has been your experience as in being a mom and raising kids in China? Yeah. Was it easy for you or it was a difficult pass? Mm, yes. <laughs> um, you know, I, I would say one thing that I did notice right away um, coming here is the friendliness that people have towards children here. Right. Um, I think they really honor mothers and and so like when I go and there's kids and they're hanging and maybe they're fussing and maybe they're being fine and maybe they're doing 
well, you know, kids are kids. Um, and all, all kinds of times, people would come and be like, wow. Um, when I didn't know very much Chinese, I, I always, um, we would joke that our family name was Sangha <laughs> Shahar. Because we would go by. Three kids. <laughs> exactly. And the normal of Chinese family has one child. Yeah. And so, like, every day, any time I went around, people would be just amazed. And I would hear multiple times say, Sangha Shahar. Sangha Shahar, Sangha Shahar. It's amazing. Three kids. Yes, exactly. Kind of, they were kind of like um, emulating this. Yeah. Because it's something that is unlike Chinese families. For sure. And then they look at me and say, oh, Doshaniba. Are they all yours? Yeah. Surprising. And then always, whoa, very good. So I really, like, that was really encouraging. And and they welcome the kids. They love the kids. Yeah, right. Yeah. Of course, like, um, it's also um, more, I guess, lonely. I mean, I didn't have all the support systems that I that I had back if home. You have been home yes. um, I didn't have grandparents to help. But you know, for for me at the time of life that I was, and maybe the person that I am, and everything, it was good for me to to kind of have, have to that. like be the mom. Like, I have to be. You were so involved that you have to do yeah. everything for the kids. And, like, yeah. Yeah, but you know, another thing that's interesting is that when when everything relies on you and you can't do it and so then like i'm kind of my kids have learned how to do some things <laughs> yes <laughs> like it's not like and maybe a lot of people here don't know they don't know this with like one child like three children are not three one children yeah. like yes they're totally different different, different, different. A different mindset a different yes. personality totally different that's great mm -hmm. so um now let's talk about the education wise. Mm. Um, have you ever tried to put uh, the kids in the Chinese education system? No. What's your take on that? Um, I, I I've never been uh, I've never really gone that direction. Um, the first three years we were here, we were working at the international school here, mm -hmm. and so the kids were there. But I've actually always wanted to homeschool. Is right. something. Um, and so, yeah, um, actually, this is I think. For me, if I get to get the chance, this is something I admire from Miss Joy, homeschooling. Mm -hmm. I, I really admired you, like the last time I asked you and you told me about it. It's unfortunate that I don't have the time, but it's yeah. something that I admired a lot mm -hmm. about you. Three, and it's something that I wanted to do, and three years, three years into being here, really the opportunity opened up because we were, both me and my husband were able to take an, um, like, a job with an English academy, right. and then there, the working hours then are after school, right. and um, and so when we take that job on, I mean, I guess some people, if they really want, it, if you really want your kids in Chinese school or in a traditional school, then you could do that. But that would be a big pressure. I feel like on the family, to me, it would be too like for who I am and where I am and everything, that would not work at all because the kids would be in school all morning and then all evening you'd work and be like, you sleep so in the hard. same house, yeah. that wouldn't be functional. And I and I really do want to grow our family together, both with, actually, I think that the academics, and this is part of the homeschooling thing, the academics right. and the relationships, like they, I'm hoping they, they, they go together. Like yeah. together. Yeah. Um, and, and so those are really important values that I, that I hold and I'm trying to, live out in, in my life and so the English the after school English job just worked what really numbers? well yes. really well so I was really grateful that that has um, given, us given you a chance to have the daytime to homeschool your kids yeah right that's that's, that's amazing I wish I could have that for my son as well hmm. but I couldn't but this is something amazing to yeah. do to the kids you know yeah are you looking forward to going back home and what are your expectations now that you have lived in China for six years and you've been going back home. Yeah. How does it feel? What are your expectations? Oh my, six years. What are six years? I mean, who was I six years ago? And... I remember meeting you in 2020 on the seaside. That I was the that. first yeah. time we met during that. the COVID period. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now that you've been leaving this and go back to America. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I'm definitely expecting a culture shock, almost like reverse culture shock. Right. Um, of course, there's food that I'm looking forward to, and then there's food that I know, oh no, I'm gonna miss, I'm gonna miss the wonderful jobs here, I'm gonna miss 
Oh, I mean, the morning market. The morning market, market yes. yes. I love the markets here, and that, and and I love that. Like I, I mentioned, the walking. I'm, I'm oh, an avid yes. walker. I love walking, and I love it when walking becomes like a practical Do part of the day right. as well. So, yeah, like being in the states. Uh, I live in a very rural environment. If you don't have a car, if you don't drive, like you can't. It's go. hard to get so, by. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about that. I'm thinking about how, how to. Okay, that's how I'd say. When, when you're here, you have a lot of freedom and um. Oh, there's a, there's a word that I want right now. Um, a little Kind of like liberty. Um. um oh, okay, you're coming with Whatever. That. But um, like, it's, it's like you can. It can be a very individualistic kind of experience. Here, right. And that's that's really great and that can be really fun and you can kind of determine who you are and what you care about and how you're gonna live and you can just do that. And the world around you just kind of keeps going and it just does. But when you're living close to family, you 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 do that to some extent, but you also need to kind of, um, almost like your roots become entangled with other people's roots. Right. And right. that's great. Your family. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's right. really that's a really beautiful thing as well. Mm -hmm. But like those are two different wonderful things. Perfect, yes. And um, and I think that that's gonna be kind of some of the growth that I get to look forward look to. Look forward in the next to two, yes. in the next in the next Kind of season. Couple of months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to adjust. Really, you have to adjust. Mm -hmm. Living in China and going back, you have to adjust in a lot of uh, things. Now, um, if I may ask, is there something that you want to check with you that you've learned in China? What is something that you've learned? Yeah. So, um, kind of connected to that that other idea. Um, I think one thing that is really beautiful and wonderful about being like an, an individual in, in another culture, being a foreigner really, is that um, some of the social pressure mm -hmm. that other people around you feel, you don't feel it. Like Why? here, I think that, you know, my experience living in China being in Weihai is different than local people's experience being in China being in Weihai mm -hmm. because they, ha they have to like navigate each other in a really much stronger way. And what other people say about you, when other people do that, it really matters, right? Right. And, um, and I think that, I, I mean, it can be anything from your clothes, from your appearance, the way, from your, living. The way you live, your choices that you make. And I think that there's, there, there's some part that you want to grow in with the people who are in your community. But I really loved um, being here and and I can say, this is something that I care about, and I'm gonna live in this way, and I don't feel any pressure from other people around me. Now, right. when I go back home, when I go back to the US, it's in a different world. I, I know that I'm going to feel more Those the pressure things. of other people, but I think that I wanna say, you know what, no, like, I can still be, um, me. <laughs> and I can, I'm kind of, I'm gonna be a foreigner now. And I, I wanna like connect with people and love them really well and really deeply. But I also kind of expect that I'm, I'm going to take on a little bit of a foreigner kind of mindset and be interested to say like, wow, what's you and your culture? And I can find out, but like, that doesn't mean like you and your culture that's there, I can find out about that, I can honor that, I can be interested in it, but it doesn't mean that I have to be exactly like you. Like you, exactly yeah, yeah. Like that there are going to be some differences yeah, and we can and learn still respect you, your, your, yeah. your differences and also if you should accept mine. Yeah. Right. That's great. So before we end this video, what are some words you want to give, uh, like some advice you want to give to other parents living in China, mm -hmm. foreign parents still in China? Maybe they are also thinking about going going back home, or they still want to stay in China raising their kids here. What mm -hmm. advice would you give them? Well, you know, <laughs> I think it actually has to do with. I'm not sure if it is specifically about being in China. It's about, I think it's about learning to love the environment that you're in. And and that has to do with the people that are there. And also, I, even something like the trees and the beach and the mountains. Like, I I don't know how much um, connection I've gotten with my own kids and and with the place by by going to the mountains, by going to the beach and having some quiet times and, and putting the phone away and, mm -hmm. and just being kind of there. Being just there. being there. And yeah. it's not like it has to be any extravagant thing. You don't have to like pack for three hours to go to the beach. <laughs> you know, it's, it can be really simple. You can do just, simple things yeah. and go outside and enjoy it. Enjoy 
being, being together, being friends, and yeah, and, yeah. and finding beauty in in, in everything. That you're, you're doing. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. So yeah, these are my ways to you. I know we have met the first time. Uh, at that beach yes, area, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And that's like now two years ago, mm -hmm. right? But since then, we didn't meet so often mm -hmm. as um, I think we should have. Um, I looked at you and your family, and I get so much motivation mm -hmm. and the desire to do things by the way I see how you handle your family. Uh, it's unfortunate that you are going back, you know, which I think if you could turn back the time, maybe you can rethink about this, right, and stay some more. Because I'm a mom too. That's why I was so eager to talk to you about being a mom and raising kids in China. It's something that we don't have a, a booklet here, like how to do it as a foreigner. But like now learning from you talking about it, just being involved, just be there, just simplify everything in life. I wish I could have more time with you, just more time with you, talk to you. I think that's how we can get about because I became a mom when I was here already, also already far away from my family. So I didn't have anyone to teach me about raising a family, mm -hmm. taking care of kids. Thank you so much. Wow, Joy. so humbling, <laughs> so encouraging. Thank you. Thank wow. you. Yeah. Thank you so much.